I think you kind of uh, become enslaved to this little four-letter word. Apostle Paul uses it in Ephesians more, more. So I'm never free because there's always more. Hey there, and welcome to the Midweek Moment. Maybe you've heard of this phrase, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We've heard it from politicians. We've heard it from philanthropists. Ultimately, those are the words of Jesus. So Pastor Carter, welcome to this episode. Let's talk about the idea of truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said it. It must be true. What on earth does that mean? What do we need to be set free from? Yeah, that's good. That's the kind of year, people, uh, time of year people are thinking about freedom and stuff, right? Got holiday and uh, yeah, that idea of truth and freedom tying together. I think it's really um, powerful how Jesus tied those two together. And uh, yeah, that's that's the question right there. What do we need to be free from? I mean, I think most people would say, I'm, I'm free. I, I do what I want. I live how I want, man. Nobody, nobody tells me what to do. Well, we live but, in the land of the free. Yeah, right? right? Yeah, land of the free. But I think... If we dig deeper, though, right? So I just want to just want to ask questions. I don't want to assume anything, but just to kind of kind of poke our listeners with some questions. You know, are you really free? And ask these of myself. I mean, am I free from the mistakes of my past, or do I still keep beating myself up? Do I still carry shame about stuff done to me? I'm not really free of that. And do I still carry guilt about the stuff I've done? Then maybe I'm not free. Am I free of regrets? You know, am I free to forgive people that have really hurt me or one of those people that says, no, I could never forgive them? Well, that's not very free then. Then that means bitterness and anger have a hold on me. And so I think about all these ways, you know, am I free from still needing to win the approval of somebody in my life? Am I free from still needing to prove myself to the doubters and critics I've had throughout my life and free to prove to myself that I can make it? You just think of all these things that when we're, when we're really honest with ourselves, we're actually not as free as we think. Mm, that's so good. And also coming out of a season where we felt trapped and yeah. locked, yeah. you know, do we feel free to dream about the future? again yeah, or to right? have hope for the future yeah. could there be a good future in us so that's so yeah, right on that's good. You know, the words of jesus you know we truly need to be free and i think jesus really knows our heart's condition yeah and so yeah. that freedom and truth it's so powerful now we hear a lot about truth in the first in the 21st century uh, people use a bunch of phrases all the time different worldviews so i'm going to throw out a few that we hear all the time yeah. and just speak to them and okay. um, talk about how that perspective sometimes could be damaging, maybe hurtful towards us in the future. Um, so here's the first one. If it feels good, do it. Oh, yeah. That's a common truth for people. That's a truth they like to live, especially in college maybe, right? Uh, yeah, that one is... Uh, it's damaging. It's not as freeing as we think, right? If it feels good, do it, but I'm still going to have to pay the price later. And there are a lot of pe people still living the consequences, uh, still living in regret of a lot of things they did that felt really good at the time and didn't lead them where they want to go in life. Uh, so not only can it be incredibly damaging to me, but if it feels good, do it, could be super hurtful to you to my own kids, to my spouse, to people that I don't even know. I think of, you know, how many people we know that maybe get, you know, killed by a drunk driver. Well, somebody was doing something that felt good at the time and others are caught up in the wake. So yeah, that's actually a really damaging one. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about you. I don't, I can't really trust my feelings. Yeah, all right? the time yeah because my feelings are so volatile you yeah. know they change you know every yeah. every minute every yeah, five minutes right? and so yeah. it's hard to like build a life on yeah. feelings and yeah. the, i think the reality is we're all building our life on something yeah we're building our marriages our relationships our careers on something on an ideology on a worldview yeah. and so it's so important that we nail down what our truth is yeah and is it secure enough to where we can lean our life on and build our life based on that truth? Right. So that one, if it feels good, do it. Ooh, yeah. that's just, yeah. I don't trust my fear. Right, yeah. 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 Well, here's another one. Um, the one who has the most toys 
wins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one seems pretty harmless, right? What's the matter with me go out just try to collect everything for myself? And But, you know, it can be damaging. We uh, Maybe you know people that uh, have sort of reached the pinnacle and have accumulated a lot of stuff, and they would tell you they're still empty. Uh, I think you kind of uh, become enslaved to this little four-letter word. Apostle Paul uses it in Ephesians, more, more. So I'm never free because there's always more. There's always more. Someone always has more than me. So no matter how many toys I accumulate. So that's not a very freeing way to live. And I know people, the more they've accumulated, now they pay more for security systems, way more fear and anxiety keeping them up at night, more for storage units. I mean, more money, more problems, I guess. But right, you know, a little bit, yeah, kind of more toys. More anxiety, fear, more to lose. And at the same time, you know, we, we hear stories of different people we know have almost nothing, live in poverty, and have incredible joy, fulfillment, yeah. peace. So, yeah, I think that truth is either damaging or just not really true at all. <laughs> so, yeah, the answer is you know. not in more toys and yeah. more stuff, right? Yeah. And I think what's what could also be damaging is um, we sometimes attribute our value or our worth yeah. to what we own. And so if I own more, then I'll be worth more or yeah. I'll feel worth more. Yeah. And that's just not yeah. not very reliable. Yeah. Well, here's another one. Uh, let's do one more. I'm the master of my own fate. Yeah, I mean, that one, I, I understand. There's days where I want to think that, but the problem is there's so many things in this world that are out of our control. And as you mentioned earlier, even COVID, and not even from a political standpoint of, you know, did the government have the right to do this or that? I mean, that aside, you were limited, and that's that was out of your control. Or you had new risks that you had to face anyway, even if you chose not to be limited. And that's, yeah, just so, I mean, honestly, the older I get, I realize how little of life that I am the master of. I mean, just so many things, right? And we know so many tragic, senseless, you know, people die all sorts of random ways. They lose their kids, the tragic things. I mean, just, yeah, there's just, there's just no way that I could ever uh, kind of subscribe to that idea that I get to be in control of so many of the things in my life because um, we just can't. So, Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. yeah. I think this season has shown us how we don't have control over anything. And yeah. so we're not the master of our own faith. Yeah. Now, as Christ followers, you know, we build our lives on the truth of God's word. And that's yeah. what we encourage everyone to to do. Yeah. Uh, because God's word is, word is trustworthy. It's withstood the test of time. It's not like trends, right? Yeah. Because it's truth or trends. Trends change. And we, yeah. I mean, we've seen trends, <laughs> yeah. you know, come yeah. back around. Yeah, you know, I hope you back. saved those bootcut oh, jeans because, yeah. yeah. you know, they're coming back around. Yeah. Um, but God's it's worth it word is just withstood the test of time so uh, a question for you when it comes to god's truth what are some of the truths that god says that we can really hold on to and was there a time in your life where you, where you really needed to hold on to a particular truth or promise from god yeah yeah that's good yeah i would say i mean the most foundational truth uh, to jesus and in all of christianity is the truth of grace of the unconditional love and gift from God. Uh, Because if I can understand that simple yet deep concept of grace, it can free me from guilt, from shame, from needing the things I mentioned earlier, needing to uh, believe in myself, win the approval of others. I mean, grace can just free all of that. And so that's an important one. I think God's truths about forgive others the way we've been forgiven by him, really hard one to practice. But when you do, you're free of revenge, free of bitterness and anger and broken relationships. It, you know, it just frees us from all of those things. I think one of the truths that's helped me the most uh, is uh, God, like we use a verse like a month ago in, in Romans eight twenty eight, kind of the whole, you know, God can work in things, even that he didn't intend and even things that are hard in the moment, uh, but still bring good out of them for us. And so for me, that's been a truth that has freed me from, honestly, hopelessness and anxiety. So even in the in the midst of seasons of my life, whether it was COVID, unemployment, um, you know, maybe going to lo- you know, lose the house or different kinds of things. And I realized just knowing that God's always at work in it. He can always bring purpose out of it, bring beauty out of it. Book of Isaiah says he can bring beauty out of ashes and these kinds of things. So that's been such 
such an important truth for me is nothing is ever truly senseless. And I think that's one of the hardest things people's li- uh, for people, right, is senseless tragedy, senseless death. But God can always bring purpose, beauty, value. He can redeem anything. That frees you. That frees you from a lot of despair, a lot of anxiety, a lot of hopelessness. So I'm thankful for that promise from God. That's good. Those are good yeah. ones to remember, grace, and that God loves us, and that we matter to God, and we're cherished by Him, and He's a good Father. And I just find it so interesting that God's truth found in His Word, a lot of times they come in the form of His promises yeah. to us. Yeah. You know, and it's just such an interesting comment, uh, uh, thought, sorry, concept, that God would give His truth to us, and He would sandwich promises in there that we can hold on to and look forward to, and that we can trust that God's not gonna break his promises, like sometimes we do, you know? And so that just gives me incredible, incredible hope. Yeah. So as we wrap up this conversation, um, what are some practical ways for people to maybe grow in God's truth? Yeah. Uh, Maybe they're starting out in their journey of faith, or they're exploring, or they have questions, or maybe they've been a Christ follower for a long time. How can we all grow? in the yeah. knowledge of our truth of God's truth. Yeah, that's good. I think part of it is, you know, you have to develop certain habits. We talked about that, uh, you know, a week or two ago. Uh, you know, I, I got to be intentional. What are my intentional practices and habits to get God's truth into me? And so, you know, some of that, of course, through the Bible. But how are you doing that? Are you doing it consistently? And am I doing it not just to check it off the list or relieve guilt, not even just to get an answer for my immediate problem. Do I get his word into me because I want to know him better and know his promises better? So that's huge. I think that's part of why prayer is meant to not just be a once in a while, just kind of weaving it all throughout in the day. I think needing to be around other people who remind us of God's promises is part of why we begin our week in worship, right? Like whether online or in person, is I want to be around people or go to life groups. That reminds me of the promises of God in my life. So I think doing those things that keep it in front of us because everything else is competing for your attention, for your energy. And so if I want his truths to be central in my life, I have to put them there at the center. And I think that takes a lot of those intentional practices. That's good. And I think it's something we all can do. Yeah. It's a matter of like you said, consistency, setting out setting out the time yeah. and developing that habit. Yeah. So. yeah, and I would say if people don't know where to start in the Bible with God's promises, they're all throughout, really, in, in each one of the 66 books. But if you want to know where to start, uh, I think any of the four Gospels, because then you can really know when Jesus says, set you free, what does that mean? People of his day wrestled with it. He shows them what it means. So definitely any of the stories of Jesus, a uh, book of Psalms, I do that one a lot because it has a lot of his promises and they're in ways that I can pray them. And so I think that's another great place to look. That's great. Well, this conversation was helpful. I learned so much from it. And I hope you learned a lot about God's truth for all of us that we can build our life on as well. Um, Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get content just like this every single week. But thank you again for joining us for the Midweek Moments. God bless you and we'll see you soon.